Hi, I'm Kendall Segan here with the Transforming Autism Project to talk to you today about managing the Easter holidays. So before we get started, I wanted to bring, bring it into the group that children with autism or individuals with autism are going to be different than how we are. And that means that their brains, their bodies, the way that they function is a slightly different than how we consider it to be normal. That means that the everyday experiences that you or I have with social interactions, with getting to and from somewhere, for someone with autism, those everyday experiences can be confusing, overwhelming, and unpredictable for them. So when we get to having a holiday or a school break, like Easter, which is just coming up, we want to be prepared how can we understand them better to help them better and you can see here on the slide the typical things that you come into with that you come to encounter with a holiday or this easter break you have the disruption of their routine perhaps your child goes to school every day and now with this easter break maybe they're not now going to school they have some time off there's also probably more family coming into town this can be a big social challenge for someone with autism. And also with family coming into town, not having school, that leaves for a lot of free time. And you can see it as challenges for people with autism, or you can also see it as how can we use this as an opportunity to help to understand our child better, to understand what they want, what they need, and to help provide them a more comfortable and safe space during this holiday break. So when we take a step back and we look at autism in general, it's important to always remember that you know your child best. So I like to say with anybody that I'm working with, your child is the teacher. So it's not me, it's not you, it's not the so-called adult in the situation. The child is always going to be the one who knows what they want best. And as the parent being around them, you know what they want best as well. So your child is the teacher, follow them. If you see that they're something that they're um, interested in, if you see that they're feeling something emotionally, talk with them, take the time to support them, support what are they doing, um, what do they want, what do they need, what are they trying to communicate to you that perhaps isn't coming across um, fluidly. And it's important back to what I first said, remember that they're seeing the world differently. So how you and I see a holiday break as maybe a relaxation, a joyful time with the family, someone with autism might see the break as, why am I not going to school tomorrow? Uh, why are there more people at the house today? Having it be a bit more overwhelming and less predictable for them. So remembering how can we take a step into the child's lens, look through the child's perspective and think, how are they seeing the world? And how can we look at how they're seeing the world and determine what we can do to help them feel safe and comfortable through the lens that they're seeing it in? This whole presentation in PowerPoint is emphasized on how can we make your child's life better? How can we make them um, Less, how can we lessen their stress? How can we have let them have a more enjoyable Easter break? How can we um, incorporate them more with the family? How can we make them feel safe, nurtured, and free inside the home during this break? So these are five quick tips I like to think about, and Andrew put it greatly in the last um, webinar, but. As a clinician myself, it's so hard to look at these five things and say, okay, yes, I'm gonna do all five of them. And when you get into the moment, it's very hard to remember, okay, what were those five things I wanted to try and do to help? And so when we look at this, I, I just like to first be prepared because if you can look at these five tips and think, okay, these are five things that I'm gonna try and keep in mind. I'm gonna try and remember to do. 
I think that that's good to help to be proactive with how we can help your child. So first, take a step back from everything. When something is happening, if you see a meltdown occur, if you wonder what's gonna happen, first, take a step back, take a step back. Hit pause, be present and think, okay, what is my child trying to communicate? How can I help them in this moment, in this present moment? Make sure you plan cushion time for them. Super important, especially when there's break time, like this Easter break. You might think that they have breaks already, that maybe from point A to point B, that's a break for them. However, it might not be as much of a break as you think it is. So maybe instead of point A to point B, you schedule in point C. So point B ends up being the cushion time. Give them time to transition from activity to activity. Give them time where they can pause, be present, process what they're feeling, process the emotions, take into consideration maybe all of the family that's in town and let them take their time to get to point C after that. This is the next point, ensuring that they feel safe and comfortable. So through taking a step back and giving them a cushion, you make sure that they are feeling safe and comfortable and free to do as they wish and please during this break. It's important that just because they have autism and their brains and bodies are acting differently than ours, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're doing something wrong. It just means that they're expressing it differently and that's okay. So seeing how your child expresses excitement or expresses the joy of having uh, friends and family over, let them, let them feel safe, let them feel comfortable and give them time to emphasize and experience those emotions. It's also important that you focus on your child's strength. As a parent, you know them best. If you know that they love Play-Doh or they love playing with cars, let that be incorporated into the Easter break. If you know that they love hanging out with a certain aunt or uncle that's coming over, make sure to incorporate that aunt and uncle in a lot of activities so that your child feels, oh, I'm doing something that I like to do. I'm doing something that I'm good at. It's always important to think, what is my child good at? What's gonna make them feel better about themselves? And how us as parents can put that into our schedule so it helps them act as they truly want to be. And just like taking a step back from everything, slowing it down is always a good thing. It might seem as a parent, I know sometimes as a clinician for me, trying to slow things down in a session with a child with autism, for me might bring up my own anxiety of, okay, um, maybe there's too much free time right now. There are so many other things I wanna accomplish in this session. But if you really take a step back and you think about it, that free time that I give them in the session is great for them. It lets them explore things. It lets them experience their full emotions. I don't give them any prompts. I just simply watch them, let them have their free time. And for me, it's a self reminder that I need to make sure that I check in with how am I feeling? Am I feeling anxious because there's free time? Yes. but. Is the child feeling anxious with the free time? Probably not. They probably thoroughly enjoy having that space to be themselves, to be comfortable, and to just express and experience what's around them in their environment. So using these five tips, over-encompassing all of it, really important to just hit pause, slow it down, be present with your child, and think, how can I help lessen their stress to help them feel more safe and comfortable during this break. So when we think about how we can help, ultimately the goal, what we would like, is when we have an Easter holiday coming up, we have this school break coming up, how can we encourage this extra family bonding time? How can we take this challenge of having an unpredictable environment and make it into an opportunity for us as parents and for our family. With the extra family coming over and maybe extra social activities involved, always remember that the affection and the love that we have is going to be most important. So remember, why are we gathering for this holiday? Why are we here? 
And like the tip in the previous, take a step back, remember the basics, let the child be, let them feel the love and infection, how they want to feel it. And with these social and routine changes coming up during the break, we're going to go through a couple of strategies that you can have as a parent so that you know, okay, I want my child to feel safe and comfortable in the house. Great. How can we do that? How can we prepare for that? And how can we embrace their autism so that this Easter holiday and breaks upcoming are looked at as a blessing and an opportunity for them to practice these social interactions. So before the break happens, before the Easter holiday, which is right about now, always good to be proactive and prepare. So ideally, we're looking at, as parents, how can we lessen the stress and incorporate more of a safe environment for our child? So to do that, we need to think, how is what we have planned during the break, how is that going to impact them? Then how can we help? So always, for me personally, visual is great. And I think for us adults as well, visual is the way to go. So if you think, okay, I want to prepare my child. I want to provide them with information. What's going to happen during this break? Tell them certain people are coming over. Start decorating with me. All really good things. But those instructions right there were verbal. So it's important to know that if you want to give a more thorough instruction to a child with autism, using a visual cue or a visual schedule board is going to be a great resource. So maybe having pictures of the family members that are coming, pictures of certain decorations that you will be using, and make them, make them involved. Um, one day when they come home from school, they can help you decorate the house. They can help you paint the eggs if you do Easter eggs and making them feel involved in the process helps them also realize, okay, I'm in control of what's happening. This Easter break might not be my same routine going to school, but now I know and I can make my awareness more predictable. So I can think, okay, I know that these people are coming over. I'm prepared for that. So it helps your child feel a bit more comfortable in the environment. This is just a quick example of a, vis a visual schedule that I've used, um, not necessarily for Easter, but I've used it for holidays. So when breaks come up, children love to ask the questions, why is this happening? What's happening? Where is it happening? When is it happening? Who's coming? They have so many questions and I'm sure it, as a parent, it sounds like a broken record. They're asking me so many questions over and over and I keep giving them the same answer. But you know what? That's great. It's great that they are so excited for the holiday, so excited for the break, and so curious about what's happening. It's another opportunity we have to engage them socially, to work on their social skills, to work on maybe something that you want to work on them with within the home environment. So I like to put together a board like this, sometimes with the child's help, sometimes with my partner's help, of what's going to be happening so we can use this to share it with them, bring it with them. This is what's going to be happening over the holiday break. Is there anything else you would like to do? How do you feel about all of this? Incorporating pictures is also really good. So this is a really good example. It's also important to recognize as you know your child best, what do they need to cope and calm? Um, during this holiday time with friends and family coming over, lots of social engagements happening. There's gonna be lots of moments where your child will feel overwhelmed, too many stimuli in the environment, and they're gonna need a second to hit pause and to take a break. And that's fully okay and fully normal. So knowing that maybe your child has a special blanket, maybe they have a special room or a special corner or a special drawing they like to do, Knowing that they can access these tools throughout the holiday break is going to be so important. Having these coping and calming skills accessible for them 
so that if a family member comes over, you guys are engaging in a family dinner and it's too much for the child. Giving them the space to say, hey mom, hey dad, I'm gonna go upstairs with my favorite blanket for a second. I'm gonna take the time to calm myself down, to remember the coping strategies and to use those and to make use of what they can do to help themselves. All of this together helps assist your child to feel comfortable, to feel safe inside the house, which is the most important thing. As they're just expressing themselves, it's always good to plan for these unexpected changes and be flexible for this holiday. So as you have expectations for the break, we all have expectations. We want the holiday to be perfect. We want the family to be happy. We want the perfect meal. We want the perfect outfit. We want everything to go perfect. But it's important to remember that perfect isn't ideal. And it's often the imperfect situations we encounter that are the most memorable. And so to speak, the most perfect. Because when they're imperfect, we get to experience the love with our family. We get to experience, oh my gosh, do you remember when we cooked Easter dinner and the meat wasn't quite ready yet? It's a story to tell. And it's important for the children to also see that when your plans don't go to plan, that it's okay. Unexpected things happen all of the time. So preparing in advance, helping with your child when they do give an expression or when they do give an emotion, hit pause. What do they need? What do they want? What are they trying to communicate to you? And how can you help them in this moment? Now looking at how you can help during the moment, it's often easy to look at strategies and think, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be proactive. I'm going to organize everything. Everything's gonna be ready and you feel ready to handle it. However, I'm sure we all know that when we hit the moment, something else happens and we need to be able to react. So always good if something happens during the moment, maintain the routine, maintain that structure. So if you feel or you find that something is throwing off your child, something is um, provoking a behavior, look at what it is, but keep maintaining that routine. It's always best to provide them with structure and predictability to help lower their anxiety during this time. So if at all possible, use that daily schedule we talked about, bring that into the conversation. So when you see that they need help, bring it in. Remember when you wanted to know why we were doing this. Remember who, who we talked about was coming today, looking at that visual board and bringing it back to them. Also, if at all possible, knowing the resources that you have, letting the child's safe space or bedroom be their safe space and bedroom. It might be tricky because guests are coming over. Maybe they need a place to stay, but remembering that it's important for your child to have their own space. And to do that, they feel super comfortable in their bedroom. It has the toys that they like, the bed that they're used to sleeping in, the, their favorite blanket, their favorite stuffed animals, knowing that this is their safe zone. So try and keep it that way. Try and maintain these bedtime routines and morning routines, probably one of the trickiest things on holiday. Um, regardless of what holiday, regardless of what break, it always gets tricky when to get your children to bed, when to wake them up, but remembering that keeping the structure and the routine is going to be so great for them. So if normally they wake up for school at 7 a.m., wake them up again at 7, give them breakfast, get them through their normal routine, and then find something for them to do during the day. So instead of canceling maybe sports practice or music class or something that you have for your child, go to it go to it as if it were you going to school so it in place it replaces the school but it still keeps the routine going so your child still feels like there's something going on in the day that gives them this structure it gives them this predictability and if at any point you find that they are experiencing some type of an emotion hit pause 
think, okay, what are they thinking? What are they feeling? How can I help? What do they need from me right now? This is another example of a holiday routine. And it's just something I wanted to put in there to remind you guys that limiting the unstructured free time is going to be really great for you. So always having something planned is going to keep your child busy. It's going to keep them less anxious, less restless, and not be bored. So always keeping them doing something, having something planned is always going to be great. Back to you know your child best, pay attention to your child. Um, look at them through the lens of how are they looking at the world right now? How can we look through their lens to understand what they're thinking, what they're feeling, to help provide us as parents with clarity, with perspective, with compassion on how they're reacting? Take time to be with them. A lot of times during the break or during the holiday, we forget because family comes over, you need to prepare for the big dinner. We forget to actually engage with our children. Take the time to spend time with them. Also recognize their coping skills. Remember what you have in place as their coping skills if something does happen. It is always good as a parent to communicate to other family members, other guests that are coming. How can they help your child? How can they see and understand your child's reactions better so that guests coming over see the child through the lens of compassion, see the child through their lens of perspective. So that way we can look at this holiday break, this Easter break as something the child feels comfortable with, the child feels safe in. Always know that you always wanna be on the side of your child, pay attention to them, they are giving you all the information that you need to help them better. And one thing I always like to mention to parents, take care of yourself. Okay, great. Great to say that. Way easier said than done. How am I supposed to take care of myself when I have family coming over, I have a meal to make, and I have an autistic child to take care of? Taking care of yourself might seem like the craziest thing in the world, but think of it like this. Your child needs you at your fullest. So to do that, you need time for yourself. So instead of constantly recognizing, okay, there's no time for me, there's no time for me, there's no time for me, take a step back. Incorporate that schedule that we talked about in the beginning. Look at that schedule. Where can you put in 30 minutes for you time? Where can you schedule time where you do have time for yourself. Let that be when your child's taking a nap, when your child's eating breakfast. There is time in the day to schedule it and think of it as you're not selfishly doing it for yourself. You're selfishly doing it for your child because ultimately children with autism do take more planning and more energy out of you as a parent. So think about it this way. I need to be at my fullest to take care of my child. So therefore, I need to take a break. I need to take time for myself. So that way, the ideal situation of my child feeling safe, of my child feeling free and comfortable in the house is always met. Always stay positive, always good. Remember that this break is for a reason. So it's Easter. Remember what Easter is about. Stay positive. Look at the bright side of things. I find that in my work with counseling, positivity is a very powerful thing. If you approach something looking for the positive, you'll probably find the positive instead of the negative. But if you approach something looking for a negative, you're probably going to find a negative outcome. So always remembering and tweaking your mindset, thinking, okay, how can I make this positive? How can I make this challenge of this Easter break an opportunity for my child? How can I prepare, plan, prepare, be proactive so that I have positive thoughts throughout this holiday? And it's also important that children can pick up on what you're feeling. So if you feel something negative, 
more than likely your child is picking up that vibe from you. So keep a smile on your face, keep the positivity, keep the structure, and remember to yourself, Easter break is coming, you are prepared, you have the schedule, you've been proactive, you know their strategies, you know their coping mechanisms, you know your child's best, you know what pushes their buttons and what is their favorite activity. You can do this, as the parent, you can do this. So final remember, try to keep it simple, hit pause, stay positive, focus on what's going well, focus on what's working, and have these realistic expectations. This holiday Easter break is not going to be perfect, and that's okay, because nothing is perfect. Part about what being human means is being imperfect. So recognizing if something's happening, it's okay. Focus on how can we make sure this situation is good for my child? How can we have a good outcome out of this situation? Um, and really remembering, lowering the stress for our child during this time is going to help them feel less anxious during the break. So thinking, how can I help them? What do they need? What do they want? And how can you as a parent make that happen so that this holiday break goes a bit more smoother, smoothly, smoother, not sure on the word there, but ultimately, so you get to enjoy the holiday. You get to enjoy the, the family that's coming over. You get to enjoy the meal that you cooked. Take time to be present and remember that your child is going to have fun with you as well and stay positive. So if you are watching this and it's already been recorded, thank you for your time for watching it. We missed you during the webinar, but next time there's always time to sign up and to register at our website. So if you go to our website, you will see a resource bank of the webinars that Andrew and I have been doing, as you know, because you're watching it but also sign up so then that way we can get a chance to talk with you and talk with you about your personal questions, your personal situation about your child so we can help you better and modify these tips and these strategies to you specifically. So Andrew and I look forward to hearing from you, hope to see you at our next webinar and keep tabs on our website for our upcoming webinars. Thank you.